stepped in tonight it was like uh, you ever had your, your phone battery drained and you know when you like you just kind of it's going to die and, and you, you finally get to the charger and you get to plug it in and I, I'm telling you what getting into church tonight it was like that for me and uh, you say the pastor gets like that for, yeah the pastor he's human amen I'm human uh, Pastor Gates is human and it's good it, just something about being in the house of God right. you know to be with God's people when you get to praising the Lord Lord starts stirring around just kind of energizing you a little bit strengthening you back up and, and man I just tell you what and then Dale gets over here and sings and I know his voice is cracking here and there but as he was singing the Spirit of God just started saying, don't you remember that? That's your heart. Right. And don't you remember that you want to be a man yeah. that walks after me? Yeah, and yeah. don't you remember why you're doing what you're doing right. and why you're preaching the gospel and why you're trying to lead? That's, that was your heart. That needs to be your heart. And yeah, I was just yeah. like, oh man, Lord, thank you. Just, I'm just overwhelmed by God's grace. I, I really am. We don't deserve it. Y'all know that. None of us deserve it. I don't care who you are. Even when you think you're good, you're not. Amen. And uh, I praise the Lord. You know what? God will humble you. He'll humble us. And when you think you got it going on, God will just kind of... Uh, humble you down. I was my, I was at the gym working out and, and uh, I'll share this telling myself a little bit, share a story and I was looking in the mirror doing kind of I, I, I like to work out a little bit and I'm doing one of these these back workouts, you know, trying to get the back going, getting 
get a little stronger and I look up to kind of check my form in the mirror and really I'm just looking at my muscles, right? And uh, and, and right there that pride just kind of got a hold of me and I and, uh, looked up and bam, the Lord just kind of allowed my neck to get a quick little spasm like I'll put you down real quick and, and uh, you know, God, God's got a way of humbling you. He, he's got a way of just reminding, reminding you that you need Him and, and uh, then He can use you again, you know. And uh, I praise God for that. I uh, pray for my wife. Uh, she's been real proud. No, not real proud, but uh, <laughs> she uh, she recently has been diagnosed with POTS, P-O-T-S. That's why she wasn't standing when she was singing. And uh, basically her heart rate kind of gets out of control and uh, she's got a uh, so just kind of keep her in prayer I love my wife uh, I wouldn't be here tonight without her yeah, man. I really wouldn't uh, I'd be I, when she found me I was saved but I was into drugs and uh, coke and you name it I was I was out partying and non-stop and, and she encouraged me to get back into church yeah. she really and I, I remember sitting in a church on Sundays all high as a kite and, and uh, thinking what am I doing here and, and then the Lord just started stirring around in my mind and uh, started to remind me, don't you know me? You know you're not dead. You shouldn't be drinking like that. You know you shouldn't be going out and doing that. And I was like, and it just started working on my mind and my heart. And before I knew it, it took a little bit of time. And the Lord was kind of breaking through. And, and I realized, what am I doing? I'm throwing my life away with this stupidity. And, uh, and, and then I remember uh, thinking, where was the guy that led me to the Lord? He's at a Baptist church. I love being in a Baptist church. The Baptist people don't mess around, amen. They get that book of the Word of God open. This thing's a hammer. I mean, you got some pride on your life. The hammer of the Word of God will just knock you out, amen, and break that hard pride off. And it's a sword, amen. That sword will come through. It's a double-edged sword. Praise the Lord for that. And so I want you to open your Bible over to Genesis 24. And as you're turning there, I'm going to give you a little testimony. of Our church will be five years old on Easter. And we're looking forward to Resurrection Sunday. God's doing great things in our midst. And, and I really have no business being a pastor other than God's, God's been good to me. As you stand uh, in honor of the Word of God, I'm going to give you a quick testimony as you turn over to Genesis uh, 24. Uh, let me encourage all the ladies, all the men in here. Listen, up at, you never know what God's going to do in your life. Uh, at, at the Capitol Con Connection, uh, we got to go into congressmen and women's offices and pray with them and give them the truth. And, and uh, any of us can go there. You know, just like we door knock out here, you can do it up there with those that are making the laws of the land. And uh, I was encouraged. Uh, then we had a, we all met in a caucus room, and, and uh, there was different uh, 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 congressmen and women that stepped in. You know, they're Christians. Amen. There's some Christian people Amen. that are standing in the gap. And yeah. uh, one guy said this, uh, uh, Daniel Webster, he said, you know, three important principles for life. Uh, learn the value of time. Uh, read your Bible. Amen. Amen. And listen. Yeah. Those three things. And then another lady, hey, hey ladies, don't, don't give up on what God has for your life. I heard there's some Christian uh, ladies in here going to be going to Bible college, Bible school, and, and listen, never too late to do something for God. There was a lady that got, she's, uh, I think they said she was the fourth most powerful woman in Congress. And uh, she got up and, and she's a Christian, went to Christian school, went up to Bible college. Now she's serving up at, 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 on the hill and she just praising the Lord and standing in the gap for God. She's an Esther, if you would. You know Esther, right? She's an Esther. And God's put her there for such a time as this. And so you just never know what God's going to do in your life. You never know what God's going to do with these young kids' life. Uh, up here getting trained, our kids, uh, kids out here running around. When, they, when we bring them in, get them into the house of God. Hey, they, their, parents, their mom and dad don't have to come. Just bring them. Yeah. They could be like a Samuel raised up in the house of God. Right. And then God will call them and, and you just never know what God's going to do. Right. And so we praise the Lord for that. And God sure is good. And uh, I want to give you three characteristics of a servant that God uses. And it's very simple, amen, but I'm going to use a ton of Bible, okay? Now listen, if, if you don't like to turn to all the scriptures, listen, just stay in Genesis 24. But if you want to keep up with me, I used to make it a competition with the pastor. Like, pastor, you go ahead and be like, wah, wah, west. You know, and as soon as he mentioned that next text, I, I would just bam I'm there, right? If I can get there before he could, I felt great, you know. And uh, I kept, of course, when I was first starting, I keep my hand right in that table of contents. You know what I'm talking about? The little cheat sheet right there. And I thought, sure enough, I'm gonna learn this thing. And God has blessed me since. And I, I'm thankful to know the Bible. Thankful to have the Bible. Let's read a few verses in Genesis 24. And we're gonna talk about. Three characteristics of a servant that God uses. Genesis 24, the Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. 
And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the, Phil of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my country and unto my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou, uh, thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning the matter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just as this servant, uh, he swore that he would go and in obedience. He said yes to his master Abraham's call to go and look for a bride for, for Abraham's son, God. And Lord, I know that everything starts with a yes. It was a yes from you in glory uh, when, uh, when you were looking for an offering of redemption. It was you, Lord Jesus, that said yes that you would come and die on the cross for us. And God, I pray that you would give us the faith to say yes in here tonight. And God, I pray that tonight you would give us that forward momentum that we need around and through and up and around all obstacles, oh God, so that we can endure, God, we can move forward, we might be able to finish strong for you. Please, Holy Ghost of God, speak to hearts. Do what no man could ever do. You speak on the inside while I speak on the outside. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here we see the uh, the servant here. He's uh, a little Bible study. I'll, I'll challenge you. Find out if you can find his name. His name does not appear here. But if you study your Bible a little bit, you might be able to find his name. And uh, listen, how's my volume? Is my volume okay out there? Is it a little too loud or is it just right? Okay, I get to preach a little bit, so you all have to kind of keep you all on your toes, okay? And uh, the servant here, listen, he, 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 he was told, hey, go find a wife for my boy. And he doesn't know where he's going. He, doesn't, he just kind of some specific directions, and, and, uh, he, and, 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 and he says yes. And i got to tell you, everything starts with a yes. What is God putting on your heart to do? Do you remember when God first come along with the gospel and knocked your door? Knocked your heart and said, hey, you need to be saved? Yeah. I remember I grew up in a, in a broken home. That mama was a drug, uh, an alcoholic. Daddy was a drug addict. Daddy went to, to jail. And, and uh, I remember a friend invited me to Bible study. I never heard about the gospel. Never heard about any of that. And, and uh, I was just a punk hoodlum running around, just uh, angry and upset. And, and uh, I remember hearing that I was a sinner. And I was on my way to hell. And that Jesus loved me. And that he would save me. I remember taking that gospel track and, and going home next to my apartment with my dad and getting on my knees and looking at Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I got on my knees and I said, Lord, you said right here, whoever calls on your name can be saved. God, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, save me, forgive me. I was saying yes Amen. to the promise of God for salvation That's in my right. life. And i got to tell you, God is speaking everywhere, all over the place for people to be saved. The question is, will they say yes? Well, and listen, even, even after salvation, God is still speaking. God is still saying, will you keep saying yes? Yeah, that's right. uh, will you keep saying yes? And, and God, God wants, listen, God wants us to say yes to Him. We need to obey every impulse of the Spirit of God. Yeah. We don't know what God's doing in people's lives. We have no idea. We can't, we've got to be willing to say yes to God. God, I will go. Listen, you know, I want you to flip, hold your hand in Genesis 24. Go over to Isaiah chapter number 6. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 6. There was a man here that said yes. And the Bible says in Isaiah 6, the Bible says in the year, in verse number 1, that King Uzziah died. I saw also the Lord sitting look, the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. How would you all like to see the Lord tonight? I mean, I want to see God tonight. I want to see His train. I want to see the angels. I want to see the 24 elders. I want to see Him bow down. I want to be a part of that holy host of heaven singing holy, holy, holy. Amen. And the Bible says that that Isaiah is there. And he gets convicted when he gets his, a fresh glimpse of God. And it says in verse number 5, Woe is me, Isaiah says, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. And he says this, that For mine eyes have seen the king of the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims, that's an angel if you would, 
unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which had taken from off the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. How many are thankful to have your sins purged? Amen. Oh, good night, man. I, you know, I think of that quote that John Newton said. Two things I remember. I'm a great sinner, but Christ is a great Savior. Hey, listen, don't ever forget what a wicked sinner we really are. Amen? I'm telling you, I don't care how far you get, you still got that wicked flesh on you. And once you think you got you got that flesh dead, you got to be real careful. Amen? We got to be real careful. We don't we don't slack off and we back down. Right here, Isaiah, he sees God. He sees His holiness. He sees Him high and lifted up. And he says, man, I'm undone. I'm so unclean. When you get closer to God, you start realizing, man, I'm wicked. I'm, I got all kinds of scuff marks and pride and anger and deceit and, and all these things. God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. Woe is me. And God comes along and He purges us. Man, I'm so, I got so much relief tonight knowing that, listen, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Make us clean, amen? It feels good to be clean, doesn't it? How many of all like to be clean? Amen. Man, I love being clean in the Lord. And the Bible says this, in verse 8, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. I wonder what God's calling you to do tonight. I wonder if God's saying, hey, why don't you speak to your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother? Hey, why don't you tell that boy out there playing basketball? Why don't you go and say, who will go for me? Who will speak for God? Who will stand in the gap? Who will it be? I'm telling you, God is looking for somebody to say yes. Amen. And you know what we do? We say, no, nah, not me, not me. Tomorrow. I can't do it. I don't, I'm not eloquent. I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not gifted. I don't have that ability. I, plus, I got this sin and this sin and this sin. And I'm, I'm just the wrong player for the job. And God says, no, no, no. Listen, God's well able to use all this. I want you to go over to Jeremiah chapter number 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Y'all like that Bible? Amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah, he was like, no, no, not me, Lord, not me. But God says, listen, I made you. I made you. Look what he says in Jeremiah 1, verse number 4. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Hey, y'all know this. God knows you before he formed you in the belly. Every baby in the womb, that is a soul. Amen. We ought not be killing babies in the, in the womb. Amen. That God knows that soul. God, listen, y'all remember John the Baptist when he was in, in Elizabeth's womb? When, when Mary come along, what that baby do when they got next to Jesus? Woohoo! He just got left inside the womb. I'm telling you what, that's a living soul. And God says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Then I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. You see, God saying this to Jeremiah. Listen, I made you. I created you. I know where you're at. I know where your limitations are. I know where you live. I know who your family is. I know all of it. I'm the one that set you apart. I'm the one that put the hairs on your head. I made you the height you are. I put you there. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And I sanctified you. And I specifically set you apart for a reason. I knew that you would have all those issues and infirmities and the tragedies and everything around. I set you apart for my will. Amen. And then we go, oh, no, not me. I can't, I can't speak. I can't do this. I don't have the money. I don't have this. And we start going on with our excuses, don't we? We go with our excuses and people are lost out there. Well, when I stop doing drugs or when I, when I stop drinking or when I stop doing this, then I'll go to church. Then I'll get saved. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You come and God's the one who helps you. Amen. You put yourself under the spout where the glory falls out. You can't clean yourself up. Right. You can't make yourself stop. Listen, I try the best I can yeah. to stop sinning. But this flesh is wicked. Yeah. That's why God says you got to kill it. Every day I die daily. Right. Every day the stinking flesh gets in the way. Let me, let me ask, does your flesh get in your way? Yeah. Every day this flesh gets an attitude. Every day I do something that's not right. Every day I think something that's not right. And every day I think, well, I can't do it anymore, God. I'm done. I'm washed up. I'm no good now. And God says, I formed you. I knew everything about you before you ever even knew it. I set you apart. I made you clean. I'm the one. If I want to use you, it's my will be done, not your will. Woo, yes, Lord. So he says, I cannot speak for I'm a child. Verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, Hey, don't you say, say not I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. 
And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. You know what God says? I don't need your excuses. It's by my power. It's by my spirit. I will speak through you. I will be with you. Listen, you're not alone in here tonight. You're not alone when you go home. You're not by yourself, okay? God promised, lo, I'm with you always. Even at the end of the world, amen? Always God is with you. Well, what about when I mess up? What about when I sin? What about this? What about this? I can't do that. I'm with you. I'm with you always. Listen, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care what you do. I'm always going to be with you. I love you that much. That's God's heartbeat. And listen, tonight, my first point is this. If you want to be a servant that God uses, you've got to have the faith to say yes. Would you say yes tonight to God? Would you say yes to whatever God's calling you to do? It might seem crazy. It might seem outrageous. It might seem way out there. But listen, would you just say yes and trust God? Just trust Him. You don't know what He's going to do. You don't know how He's going to work in your life. You say, well, I don't know where to go. This servant, go back on over to Genesis 24. This servant didn't know what, what he's like, well, what if, what if she won't come with me? What about this? What about this? And you know what he had to do? He just had to obey. Listen, I'm serving God tonight out of obedience. I'm not serving God tonight because I'm, because I'm good. Hello? I, I don't keep myself saved. You don't keep yourself saved? No. Listen, he says this. I, no man can take you out of my hand. I can't take myself out of it. I couldn't go to hell if I tried tonight. Right. Amen? That's a pretty great thing, isn't it? Yeah. Now, God's grace, He saves me, and then He keeps me. Amen? He's well able to deliver me all the way into glory. This servant, he didn't know what. He just knew that, that he was being commanded to go, and he had to say yes. Let me say this, as we're going back over to Genesis 24. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Yeah. The Bible says, live in the Spirit. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit. Listen, every day when we say yes to God, that's our opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. To walk after the Spirit and to, and to just see what God wants to do. But if we let our flesh get in the way, if we let excuses get in the way, if we let finances and intellect and education and, and the, the lack thereof get in the way, listen, we're never going to find out what God has in our life. That's right. We're never going to see the country change. Oh, I don't like this and like this. And I don't like this. Listen, why don't you have the faith to say yes to God? Amen. To have the faith to stand up and say, you know what? If God wants to do something, here am I, send me. Yeah. God, I'm not going to give you any more excuses. God, I want to do something in this life for you. Amen. Oh, what a great thing this servant said yes. Number two, we need to have the mentality with, to, go, to move forward around all obstacles. Let's take a look at this servant that God uses here. Genesis 24. This guy gets loaded up with all kinds of camels in verse number 10. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by the well of water at the time of the evening, even at the time the women go out to draw water. And he said, look what, he's going to have a prayer meeting here. He's going to have a time to prayer. And he says, all right, Lord, my master, the Lord God of my master, I pray thee, send me good speed. You know what he's saying? He's saying, God, please, would you help me? God, would you prosper? Would you help me? Send me good this speed, this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Please bless my master. I'm just out here trying to follow you and be a blessing to him. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the women of the city come out to draw water. And he's praying, he said, I'm here, God, for you. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down the pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and there shall they say, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. You know what he's doing? He, got, he said yes. He said yes to, 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 to this oath. He's, he's out there. Now he's out there. He's got all the camels. He doesn't know where he's at out there. Must have, must have, damn, he got all his camels, everything with him. He, you think he knows what he's doing? He don't know what he's doing. But right. he did it by faith. Right. And he's got everything with him by faith. And he, he kneels down and he says, Lord, please prosper me. Please bless me, God. This is for my master. Right? How many this more? He, God, please. And then he gets specific with this prayer request. Lord, I know you hear me. Would you, would you please just 
Let the next lady that comes along, let it be her. Make this an e Would you just hook it up, God? And let it be her. And, and this is how I want to be able to tell that it's her. Why don't you just make her want to give me drink and the can hook the camels up too with water too. And look at look what your Bible says in Genesis 24 there. Look what it says. And it came to pass, verse 15, before he had done speaking. He's in the middle of his prayer time talking to God. She comes up, behold, Rebecca came out. Yeah. Who, oh, my soul, who was born to Bethel, son of Milka, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. This is her. And the dance was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Go ahead, drink, my Lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon, his, upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, look, she says, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again to the well. And, and she, you know she did? She, she she gave one of them camels too. Does it look like his prayer getting answered? God's putting this thing together. The whole thing together. Look what it says in verse 20. And the man wondered at, at, at her, held his peace to what, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. You know what he's doing? It's happening. It's happening. It, she, I, you know how much water for them camels? Them camels drink a lot of water. Yeah. It's not like it's automatic turn the faucet on. You know, no, she's gonna have to bring that water out nonstop. That's gonna take a long time for all them gal. How much water a camel drink? This is a dedicated woman. Yeah. This one, listen. She's a dedicated woman. She's a woman of character. She's a pure woman. She didn't give out her virginity to anybody. She's the one that says, no, uh. -uh. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right? She had the power to say, no, get back. Get thee behind me, Satan, right? She, she, she had the power to say no to what looked good and felt good to go after what was best. Right. Yeah. This is a powerful lady. I got to tell you what, ladies, when you get powerful like that for God, God's going to bless you. Amen. Now, this woman, she didn't know who her husband was going to be, but I'll tell you what, you read the end of the story, you're going to find out. It's a big deal. And so, he's, this servant's like, oh, Lord, you know what? Please let this be her. He's already getting some prayers answered, but he's not done. He's got to verify now, you know? The Bible says this in 22, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half shekel of weight and two bracelets for her hands and ten shekels of weight to go, man, she gets hooked up already, right? All kind of bejeweled all over the place, right? Uh, what do they call it? Uh, gold? I mean, bling, bling on her right away. I mean, she's like, this. he's hooking it up. And it said, and said, whose daughter are they? Come on now, tell me a little bit more about yourself, okay? He's trying to bring her in a little bit. Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said, okay, let me tell you who I am. I'm the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, who when she bare in Nahorn, she said, more run to him, we have both strong proper enough to root the lodging. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. He said, blessed be the Lord God, my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master in his mercy and his truth. I being in the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them in their mother's house. You know what he said? He said, just because I said yes, I'm in the way of God. Yeah. I just stepped out and said yes to God. I prayed on the path. Yeah. I'm being in the way. Listen, you know how to move a ship? The ship's got to be moving for that thing to, to, to turn left or right. You ever try to steer a ship that's not moving? It doesn't turn. You know what? So many times we want to see God work in our life. But if you're stuck standing still and you never said yes to God, you're never going to be able to let, God's not going to be able to move. Listen, it's the wind of God that moves. You've got to put your sails up. Amen? Amen. you got to get, and you know what he said? You know what? I'm being in the way. I just said yes to God. Yeah. I didn't have it all figured out. I just said, come on, camels, let's do this. I pray, God, please bless me. And as soon as she said who her family line was, he must have just been humbled. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He knows, he, he, why? Because he knew God just answered his prayer. Yeah. God just specifically yeah, answered his yeah. prayer. He knew who she was. It was the right family. He saw God on this thing. Listen, sometimes we need to see God's confirmation on our life. Yeah. You know, I think about a few confirmations in my life that God has blessed me with. I remember when I was wrestling the call to preach. And I said, Lord, I was a businessman. I made good money in business, real estate broker, banker. I trained people how to make money. And uh, and 
God was calling me. I couldn't sleep at night. I was reading on the Holy Spirit and, and just studying the Bible, and, and God was just bothering me. You ever get God bothering you? Man, so when He bothers you, you be careful because He's going to let go. I mean, you can't turn to hell to heaven another way. You know, when he, you got to just listen, right? And God was bothering me. I couldn't sleep, and finally I said, All right, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I could sense, if I didn't know it, you know, I had enough sense to kind of figure it out. And uh, the next day, I, and I, I was just wrestling with the Lord, Lord, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? You want me to preach or something? Don't you want? I'm not going to be an idiot preacher that just steps out. You know, I'm good with giving money, make money, you know, and, uh, and Lord, but I don't want to be one of them crazy, you know, I, I got to know this is you. Yeah, man. Right? I got to know this is you. Yeah. And uh, my wife, she's driving on the road, and I'm sitting there wrestling with the, with the Lord, and she's driving, and I'm reading my Bible, and, and I'm reading a passage of Scripture. Listen, whenever you're trying to listen for a confirmation, get in the Bible. Right, right. Get your confirmations in the Bible. Right. I, I can tell you some other thing. God does. God will work in your life, okay? Yes, but make sure you get that confirmation in the Bible. Amen. And I'm reading Matthew 9, 36, but it's sheep having no shepherd. You look at all the multitudes, right? Sheep, no shepherd. I'm putting my head, Lord, sheep, no shepherd. You have to make it clear to me. Sheep, no shepherd. You say people need a shepherd? What you, and then I read another passage, but be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work. What are you trying to tell me? Be, be in the work of the Lord. Lord, you got to make it clear. Make it make crystal clear. I just need a sheep, no shepherd, always about the work of the Lord. And listen, as we're driving on the road, I look up, and there's sheep everywhere. <laughs> All over the left side of the road, the right side of the road. And I'm like, all right, Lord, sheep, no shepherd, sheep everywhere, nobody to shepherd. It's the work of the Lord. Okay, yes, Lord. Yes, I get it. Yes, I'll, I'll do it. Listen, now listen, he used the scripture on that one, okay? I'm going to give you another confirmation, okay? I remember one time I told the Lord I was praying for a 40-day fast. Lord, give me a 40-day fast. I want to be with you closed for 40 days. Okay? And I'm already in the way, but I'm looking for confirmation. Give me some confirmation, Lord. Please, give me some confirmation. I want to know that this is what you want. I want to do what you want, right? And, uh, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, before bed, if you wake me up, I'll get up. Now, I last night, Lord kept me up. I didn't, I, I didn't have the same spirit. You know, I was like, come on, I'm trying to go to bed, you know? But this, this I was seeking the Lord for an answer, right? <laughs> hey, we got to be real here too, right? Okay. And, uh, and so I, I remember, I remember, Lord, wake me up if you want. And I had a prayer closet. I had my prayer I mean, I had a prayer closet, brother. And we had a walk-in closet. It was big. It was like the, the half the size of this room. Big old closet, right? And I had all my missionaries up and my white boy. I was serious. I had sackcloth, you know, itchy, like potato. Imagine wearing a potato sack. And when I was getting real serious, I'm fasting and prayer, I put that sackcloth thing. And it's like, oh Lord, I'm afflicting myself, you know. <laughs> and my wife, she probably think I'm crazy in there. But I told the Lord, right? And it's in the closet, like Jesus said, Matthew, you know what I'm saying? Matthew 6. And so I told, I told the Lord, you wake me up, I'm going to get out and pray, Lord. I'll pray. And so, two in the morning, he wakes me up. And remember, I'm praying. Give me confirmation. You know, I need to know this is what you want. I'm about to not eat for a long time, okay? I need to know. Otherwise, if you're not with it, it's just me just, you know, starving here. And so at 2 o'clock in the morning, the Lord kind of like tugs me a little bit, you know? And so I'm, I get up. Oh, Lord, I told you. And I get out to the foot of my bed, and I'm walking. And you know how the flesh is. Come back to bed. What are you doing? What are you doing? you got to get some rest. Sleep. And you know how sleep gets in? All right, I'm going back to bed. I turn around at the foot of the bed, and all of a sudden, my CD player pops on, and it's the Word of God playing. You know, it's the Bible. It was Proverbs. Thou shalt. I, I could know no specific scripture, and there was no alarm set. But God made His holy Word play out of a CD player that has an alarm. Just turn on, and I'll tell you what: holy sobriety come over me. <laughs> And I ran to that prayer closet. <laughs> I got in that prayer closet. I'll tell you what. God used that. I prayed for a little bit. I thought, no, no, i got to get confirmation here. i got to get something. He wants to tell me something. So I go downstairs. I get in my Bible. Listen, always have a reading plan. Get a reading plan. You can read through your Bible. Okay. Sometimes you don't know where to read, right? And sometimes we get lazy. Come on. No, it's not just me that gets lazy. Right? I go on. i got like an autopilot where it's just, you know, autopilot's on. And it's Proverbs and Psalms. You know, it's just autopilot. You autopilot right into the mountains if you're not careful, right? <laughs> right? And so that's what we've got to read through the full Bible, right? Well, I had a, I had a reading plan. And uh, I get in my reading plan. I get down there in Kings. And I find in my readings right there where Elijah, God, God says, Arise and eat for the journey's too far for thee. You know what? He tells me twice. And it says he goes on the journey of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, well, you know what I did? 
I got to that cabinet, as I opened up my food, I just started stuffing my face. <laughs> but what was it? It was confirmation. It was confirmation. In my life, God was telling me, yes, go. But I needed to eat. I'll tell you what, I went from 165 pounds to 190 pounds. My pants didn't fit anymore. I, I mean, I worked out like crazy. I was benching 365. My pants didn't fit. I was doing leg lifts like, I don't know, 12, 1,300 pounds, right? And I'm trying to stack myself up because I'm going to go 40 days, right? I'm going to tell you this. What helped me get through that 40 days was the confirmation. Mm -hmm. Was the confirmation. And a wonderful, godly wife. Amen. God gave me a confirmation in there. And, and I saw the circumstances. I had the Word of God on it. I'll tell you what, when I felt like I was going to die on day 26, 27, I, I was. I was in the back of the church, always coming to midweek service, and I felt like my heart was going to stop. The duh. The duh. You know how slow heart beat? Mm -hmm. And I just felt, Lord, you got to kill me, kill me. You said it. You said you're going to take me 40 days and 40 days. I ate. I worked out. I did it, Lord. You're going to kill me, kill me. This is it. I'm going all the way. And sure enough, God, you carried me all the way through carried me all the way through. But listen, I, I prayed about it. God gave me a confirmation on that thing. Yeah. And I tell you, I learned a lot in it. This servant, he's praying, and he's in the way. He's actively moving forward towards the goal. And he's praying through to get an answer. And God marks it right there. But he's not done yet. he got to go back to the house. Right? Look at the scripture. What happens here? He goes back to the house. They take him back. In verse 29, Rebecca had a brother. His name was Laban. Laban ran out to meet him. And uh, they find out, hey, come on in. Bless the Lord. Verse 31, the man came to the house. Verse 32, he ungirded himself. And they set meat before him. Look at verse 33. Look at the servant spirit here. And there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, speak on. Let me say this to you. He said, listen. I want to be able to chill and relax. I'm just giving you our language for today, right? That's kind of what he's saying. But listen, I cannot get comfortable here. I need to tell you what I'm doing here. I'm here for a reason. He's talking to the family now, right? What's, he, what's his mission? His mission is to find a bride, right? For Isaac. So I'm not going to get comfortable until I tell you what's up, until I tell you what I'm doing here. Same thing goes for us as, as soul learners, right. as preachers, as Christians, right? We can't just get comfortable and get sidetracked on, on whatever the world's doing. We gotta say, listen. Let me tell you, Mister Mister Elected Official, what I'm doing here. I'm here to represent the Lord. I'm here to pray. I'm here to stand for the truth, right? Let me tell you uh, what I'm doing. And he said, I'm not gonna eat until I tell you why I'm here. And you say, what is that, preacher? He's moving forward around obstacles. Yeah. Amen. He's he's getting real clear. And so he tells him of his error. And he says in verse 35, I'm Abraham's servant. Lord bless my master, Abraham greatly. He has come great and have given him flocks and herds. I mean, he's rich. In, my, in verse 36, And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him he hath given all that he hath. Listen, my master Abraham is wealthy. He's got a boy. He's getting hooked up big time. And my master made me swear, saying, Hey, he, he based, and I'll, I'm going to paraphrase this next part, okay? You all read it when you get home. He said, I'm here to find the wife for that boy. I'm here to find him a wife. Okay? And so, you know what happens? They say this. He, he reiterates the full story. And then look what he says in verse 49. And now if he deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. You know what he says? Now I told you what I'm doing here. Right? Now you tell me. You tell me. Am I at the right place? I mean, this dude, he, he's serious. Right? He's got he's got wealth, right? He's got a mission. I mean, he's going after it. I mean, he's now if I'm in the right place, you tell me. If I'm not, you tell me I'm getting out of here. Right? And you know what they say? They the, the family says this in verse 50. The Laban, Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord, we cannot speak thee bad uh, or good. Behold, Rebecca, you know, she's here, man, before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. It came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord. You know what he's doing? They just said, yeah, she's yours. She's yours. Now listen, what kind of live? Of course, the dude's hooked up and he's godly. That's pretty sweet, right? I mean, he's wealthy. Camels, bracelet, jewelry. I mean, he got it all going on, and he loves God. That's a blessing. That's a real blessing. But listen. Remember, I told you, the first thing, he had the faith to say yes, but he's not done yet. Number two, forward around obstacles. He, got a, he, he hasn't delivered on the goods yet. I was in real estate. A lot of times, people, when they buy a house, they get all happy when they get into escrow. But it's not done yet. 
I always told people, don't celebrate until the keys get in your hand, until that deed gets recorded. Don't you start jumping up and down and getting happy because you don't know what's going on until that thing's done, right? When the keys are in hand, the deeds, uh, you know, everything goes through escrow and gets recorded, then you can get happy, but not until the thing's done. This guy's job's not done yet. Look what happens here. The family says, hey, why don't you chill for longer? Don't go anywhere. Look at verse 55. And, the, and, and it says this. He says in verse 54, he, he eats, right? He tarries there all night. And the next day he raises up in the morning and says, send me away into my master. Okay, it's time to go. Let me go. Verse 55. Her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least 10. Hey, let her stay here for 10 days. After that, she shall go. And he said, look at his spirit. Look at this guy. He says, hinder me not. Don't stop me now. Seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me, send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, okay, you know, we're going to call her and ask her. And she says, you know, she says in verse 58, she says, will, he says, wilt thou go with the man? She says, I will go. Look at the spirit of this guy. This guy, he says, listen, I stay tonight. I'm leaving. Don't try to keep me longer. Right. If she's the right lady, let's do this now. Yeah. Do you see how he's not, he's not, um, he's not getting sidetracked. He's not getting sidetracked. Listen, look out here. Look outside. You know how many people are getting sidetracked? Yeah, I know. And i got to tell you, I'm tempted all the time to get sidetracked. How about you? Mm -hmm. Man, that devil, he'll come along. He'll put on some, some glittery things in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. he'll, put some, he'll put some things out there that look good. They look shimmery. And, they, and listen, there are times I'm like, nope, I'm good to go. I've got my sights set. I'm a man on a mission. And there's other times I'm weak. Mm -hmm. I don't feel real strong. Yeah, and then them glittery things that they didn't have any glitter on before, but now they're yelling a lot louder. Right? And that devil, he's going to try to just stay, just relax, enjoy this longer, spend more, do this. Right? And i got to tell you, I just need the grace of God to keep me focused. Mm -hmm. You know, we're our worst enemies. Right. Yeah, right. We are, if we got to get out of our own way, right. we've got to be able to mm -hmm. say, God, oh, I can't be chilling at this spot any longer. I have to keep moving forward. Hey, sometimes there's places in our life God meant for a blessing for a season, but then you've got to keep marching. Right. you got to keep on moving. Okay. Some of us are trying to go back to, to a spot where God meant something, but we got to get serious and keep pushing on. Listen, church, we got Easter coming up. I, lie, I know we got a good church. I, I, I know I'm just a guest speaker here, but I'm just going to talk to you like I'm my, church, my church here for a minute. The great shepherd, he's leading us forward. Amen. Now listen, there are times when it's by the still waters, and it's sweet by the still waters. And there are other times he's leading us to other pastures. Right. It's time to press on. And the shepherd, the great shepherd, this is the sheep moving us forward. We got to keep moving. You say, How do I know? You gotta get in the Bible. You gotta to stay together and get in the Bible and let him lead you. This guy, this servant right here, let me tell you what his spirit says. Hinder me not. Yeah. Don't stop me now. Right. Uh -uh, don't stop me now. I'm moving forward. If you're if you're serious, let's do this. Listen, we got to get like that with people in our life, don't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? There are time wasters out there. I go out soul winning, knocking doors. I was in business, you learn this too. You can tell when people are just talk, talk, talk. And they're not going to do the deal. Right. There are people out here that just talk the talk. They're not serious. And ladies, listen, how many of y'all not married? Raise your hand, you're not married. Hey, listen, there, there are going to be some people that just talk the talk. And you got to have enough wisdom and discernment. Don't let your heart get all emotionally connected. You've got to be able to have enough wisdom to serve and says, listen, I'm going this way. If you're going this way, then this is going to be good. But if you're not going this way, uh-uh. Right. right? Same thing with church. When we're knocking doors, listen, I'm all for loving on people. And you look at Jesus, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. He kept walking, right? You look at Elijah with Elisha. Throws his coat on him, keeps walking. Yeah, amen. We've got to have enough discernment to be able to say, I'm going this way. If you want to come, let's go. Right? But none of this, none of this sweet talk and pull me aside nonsense, right? Hey, there might be a lot of people that, that talk a good game, but if you don't see any action to it, the proof is in the pudding, right? I mean, show me your fruit with your actions, right? Don't just talk a good game. Let me see something. Isn't that right? Show me with your works, right? And that's what we, that's what we need. This player, this right here, this guy, you know what he is? He, he, he's, he's always thinking about his purpose and his role. Uh, listen, listen to me for a second here. You have to keep your purpose in mind when you're going out every day. What are you going out for? What's your role? What has God got you doing? Be prompt with your time. Remember, the Bible says redeem the time. You only got so much time. And listen, you got a divine appointment here. You got another divine appointment up there. If you tarry too long, you got to keep kind of keeping a mentality here of I'm on a mission. And listen, everywhere you go, communicate your vision, your your mission, 
and your story. This player, you know what he did? Everywhere he went. Let me tell you, I just prayed and this happened and this happened and now I'm here. You know why I'm here? Because I, I told, I told uh, Pastor Gates, listen, I'm going to Capital Connection. You want to come by and see you all? My, my heart is here with you, church. Where your treasure is there will your heart be also. When we come here, I'm thinking, yes, I love these people. I love these people out here because I want to reach these people, right? God has led me here. I want to see God raise up this man of God and strengthen his wife and Paul and the family. And, and listen, I want to see you all strengthened. I want to see you all blessed. Amen? Amen. And that's what I'm doing here. Amen? I'm here of God to try to strengthen your hands so you can say yes to God so you can be forward around obstacles. Don't get bogged down with time wasters. Amen? Don't get bogged down. Or so execute effectively. This guy, listen, even if you don't see the way to get it done, there is a way. If, God's got, if, it got, if it's God's will, God's going to get it done. I'm going to tell you another story. I remember being discouraged in the ministry. I didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. Y'all ever been like that? Mm -hmm. Walking by faith is going to be like that. How are we going to pay the bills? And I, I thought the church was going to crumble. I just said no. And I got to step into church. I went to a church meeting. And I get in there and they're singing. And I just sit in there and I'm just, I being in the way, the Lord encouraged me. That's it. I was just in the way of God. I was just still stepping forward. I was like Ruth, you know, on the field feeling down, but little did I know Boaz, big hunky Boaz, put a handful of purpose for, out for me. You know what I mean? Right? And I'm telling you what, like Ruth, remember Ruth come along and Ruth in the book of Ruth? The handfuls of purpose, encouragement. I got in there at that church, the choir started singing, and the Spirit of God just said to me, I will do it. I will do it. And I thought, I know that verse. And I went over to John chapter 14, and God just penetrated my heart and said, I've got you. I'm going to take care of this. This is my church. You're serving me. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to encourage you. I will do it. You know, I don't know, how, I don't know what the, the timeline was thereafter. I know right then and there when God spoke to my heart, he was going to do it. Probably in, wasn't a few months later before a $39,000 check come through for the church. So I was at lunch at a meeting. Hey, can, can we come to you? Sure, sure. I mean, a meeting. I step out. We have this for the church. $39,000. Now that, that, that meant a lot to me at that moment. Right. You know, at other times in my life, that may have not been a lot to me. It means a lot. I mean, but at other times in my life, that was you know, just another one rolling in. I'm just saying, you know, God will take you through some different seasons in your life to where the things that, you know, where it makes a big difference in your life. And God, He just confirmed and confirmed. And listen, He's going to confirm all the way to glory. Because He said He was going to do it. But we've got to keep moving forward. Now let me ask you a question. She said yes. Has He delivered yet? Has this, no, number three, and I'm finished, okay? Finally, finish the job. Amen? Finish the course. Get it done. Amen? Don't back down. Don't, I mean, don't tarry. Do it. Get it done. Look at, look at the passage here. Bible says this. They load up Genesis 24, verse 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsel, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lahori, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditation in the field. Looked like a man of prayer, huh? At the even time, he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off her camel. She went, what's that? Who's that? Who's that? And then, for she had said unto the servant, what man is that that walketh in the field to meet us? Who's that? And the servant said unto her, it is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered You know, she said, oh man, I better cover myself, get myself. You know how we do that with mascara? And, I mean, that's her thing right there, right? She goes, I'm getting ready, you know, this is him, right? And she finds out, look at this, the Bible says this. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. You know what, that, you know what the servant said? Let me tell you the story, Isaac. I went here. I, I swore to Abraham I'd go do this. I prayed. God brought Rebecca to me. And right when I was praying, I found out who she was. I went to the house. I told them who they who who what I was doing. I was looking for a bride for you. And listen, she's it. She's your bride. This is her. I worked this hard to bring her to you. You say, preacher. He worked that hard to get the job. Yes, you know what, church? You know who's working that hard to bring a bride to Christ? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. The Holy Spirit of God is working every day to touch people's hearts, to build this church up, yes. to bring a bride to Christ. And right here, now let me ask you this question. How many of you would like God to work like that in your life? Amen. He is. He, the Holy Ghost of God is working. All Listen, He's out there moving and all around. I mean, he's working. You may not always, listen, Isaac may, may who knows, the pastor doesn't say. He may be still messed up about his mom passing. I think he was. You read the scripture. And sometimes we're down and we think about quitting. You ever thought about quitting? Mm -hmm. You ever thought, man, is it worth it? Yeah, I do this, 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 this. Is it worth it? You know, and then the devil comes along and puts something shiny in your eyes. And, and listen, sometimes we don't see what God's doing and the blessings that he's got up ahead if we'll just stay faithful. And Isaac, he would have been down because he lost, lost his mama. You ever lost a mom? Ever lost a dad? Ever lost a child? Ever lost, listen, family or friend? Ever lost a job? Listen, you feel like you lost something. And sometimes you can just get so discouraged and just, is it ever going to change? I'm here to tell you, God is working. He is working to bless your life. He is working to hook you up big time. Amen. Here Isaac finds out he sees his bride come. And the Bible says this. Look at verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his master's death. Wow, what a story. Isn't that a great story? You say, preacher, what am I to draw from that? Listen, three characteristics of a servant that God will use. Number one, faith to say yes. Will you say yes to God? Whatever it is, just obey the Spirit of God. Number two, would you have a mentality that says, I'm moving forward around obstacles, through obstacles. I'm going to keep executing for God. Number three, I'm going to finish the course. I'm the deliverer. When I start something, I'm going to finish it. I'm telling you what, I'm going all the way. Jesus went all the way to the cross for us. The Bible says when he finally, listen, remember when he got about Mount Calvary, he got the cross, and it must have been hard after that. Well, I mean, so marred that nobody could even recognize him. Right. Falling over, and guess what? Simeon comes along and helps him carry that cross up. Listen, you feel like you're down yet. You can't get to that spot to finish. Listen, let God provide for you on the trail. Let him do it. He will. Jesus finally got there. And he finally got on that cross, bled and died to purchase mine and your salvation. He went all the way to the finish line for you and I. What a blessing. What a blessing. And he's still working in our life today. Say yes to God. Move forward around obstacles and finish for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father. Would you bless this invitation now? Thank you for the Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The